337, calling from a 337 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hey, is it me? It is you, Hello? I think. Hey, how you doing, Sam? Um, yeah, I just call him. I'm Tyler calling from Louisiana. Just Tyler, uh, whatever you got to put, you got your, your whatever you switched uh, on your phone, switch it back. Okay, is this better? That's so much better. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, um, this is just, just a few quick things. I'm calling from Louisiana, and uh, I've been following the whole uh, thing with the 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 reform commission trying to um yep uh, you know uh do something with the super delegates and and the only thing that I wanted to say about that is although there's not you know uh everybody who's as involved as as we are in in politics and in you know listen on a daily there were still 13 million people who voted for Bernie Sanders in the the primary so i think it would be very important for the Democratic Party to to think about that in when when they're dealing with these things. Because even though they may not know, you know, all of the intricate things about politics, they still understand. Like super delegates, that's, that's an obvious thing. That's an obvious thing that was obviously a you know a, a, an obstacle for for Bernie Sanders. So those people will have those same thoughts on those things. And if nothing comes out of this, I, I think that. That would be a very bad thing for 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 the Democratic Party. And secondly, I, I, the the same thing that's that's occurring on the left with the you know the the emergence of uh, podcasts and, 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 and things and people getting engaged uh, in in politics on the left, it's happening within the black community. So you have a, a a lot of black people who used to vote with the the somewhat uniformity. You, that that won't be there in the future, and as time continues, you won't have that that same ability to, to dupe people. You know, with with things like you know hot sauce or or you know uh, Bill coming in and, and I like hot sauce. The, the saxophone. <laughs> yeah, and, and Bill coming in and playing and playing the saxophone. Hey, so what's up, brother? I think I only say these I only say these things so that the Democratic Party could recognize this and, and say, okay. We, 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 we need to actually be substantive. And if they aren't substantive, it's, it's, it's really, I, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's upsetting because everybody, we all know how, how, how great things could be. But if those things don't happen and, and people don't feel that they are a part of the process, I think that, you know, it, <laughs> who knows, you know? Yeah, well, let me just say, I think, you know, uh, and, and one of the reasons why, and it just didn't happen, I wanted to get uh, Nomi Constant, because I was in Vegas, she was in Vegas d- doing that, um, in- involved in those DNC meetings. Uh, I wanted to get a sense from her, you know, there I have some questions that don't make sense uh, to me, and then some um, uh, other things about the DNC. Uh, it didn't happen, and I'm going to try and figure out a way of of trying to make that happen in the near future. But there's a lot of stuff I think that the the DNC is doing wrong, even from their logic. And um, I, you know, I think Tom Perez is really good at the Department of Justice. Um, he was not my um uh first choice for chair of dnc for both the reasons that he has little <clears throat> it seems to me um elected uh experience um well that's i think inarguable but also um but also i wanted keith ellison who i don't think is you know uh, god's gift by any uh stretch but is um the people that would come in and have access to resources, I think, would have been much better. I think they're making right, some mistakes. Right. I don't know if it's as bad as it's been reported, frankly, in some areas, but I think they're making some mistakes. I well, think I mean, there their needs fundraising to be is very bad. Well, their fundraising's bad, but I think that's because people are just saying we're not going to fundraise to the DNC, which is fine. You know, you fundraise to the DCCC, you, you fundraise uh, directly to uh, candidates, which I think is better because I don't think the DCCC is particularly great either. That needs. That is an entity, uh, and the Senate uh, version of it are both entities that need more reformation, it seems to me. The DNC could be a functioning, valuable entity. It is right. not. 
it is not that powerful. I mean, I, I just, I don't think it's that powerful. Um, I think it could be much more effective, and it's not. So there's an opportunity cost there. But people get caught up a little too much in the power of the DNC. The superdelegates, right. you know, look, the superdelegates, they are signifiers, but they don't have any ability. The, technically, they do. But I, the, the day that superdelegates votes against the um, the candidate with more, uh, you know, normally delegated delegates um, is the day right, that the Democratic but, Party ends. And they know it. They know it. The Look, I would also be on the lookout. Right, but, They're going to oh, announce oh, something, I bet, right. soon about superdelegates would be my guess. They're going to do some type of uh, tip well, they in were, that direction. They were talking about reforming it, like cutting back on the numbers or like making that. who gets They'll it. They'll definitely do something gets, like get, that. It gets made on it. I mean, it's because, look, I happen to think that there should be some mechanism that if you have a candidate that wins all the primaries and then June comes around and then they get indicted for bribery, um, that there should be a mechanism for the party to... Get rid of them. I don't know what that mechanism is. Maybe all the party officials, uh, maybe not the super, maybe all the delegates revote. I don't know what it is, but there should be some type right. of mechanism. And, uh, I think. And my, 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 I think. Look, I'm sorry. Listen, su- my, my problem with, with the super delegates isn't them switching switching the, the the vote at the end. It's more so of swaying opinion on who yes. is viable and who's not at the beginning. And, yes, and, 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 I agree. and that's the same thing with with media. But and, look, and that's my only problem, my main problem with superdelegates. And my thing about them not making a change with that is it's the most obvious thing. So if you don't have people who feel that they're part of the process and, and they feel that, that there's there's no hope, I think that can only hurt the Democratic Party. And that's what I'm saying. It's not yes, the, okay, I agree with you. Listen, the, the, I think as a, as a way of signaling to all those people who voted for Bernie, hey, we're making um, uh, some reform right, moves. Right. I have to say... I think right. it's an empty gesture, but fine. If it works with people, great. I just don't think that the, the that you know that that the value of like this candidate is destined to win because the super delegates already you know before the first ballot is cast have already whatever that happened to Hillary Clinton. Obama overtook him, uh, overtook her, and they they all switched. But with that said, um, what you're telling me about the African American community is. Is good, and you know we had on the show back in 2012, I think it was uh, Glenn Ford, who came out and said, you know, uh, black people who have been traditionally the most radical elements of the Democratic coalition, if you will, of the left, um, have been largely um, uh, undercut or have been um, deactivated in many ways during the Obama administration. And right. um, and and I think there's a certain inevitability that, you know, particularly particularly younger uh, African-Americans like, you know, frankly, just younger people in general are going to become more and more uh, radicalized and, and don't you skeptical think with that dynamic that it might even be like. If there is still a major superdelegate presence in 2020, there's going to be a certain type of voter in the Democratic primarily, by pr- primarily young people across all racial and sexual boundaries, right? That that's going to have the opposite effect on them. Like you talk about presetting, like the superdelegates endorse somebody and they have a sense of inevitability. I think of a bunch of pre mm-hmm. a bunch of delegates sort of course. circling around some senator. That's going to have the opposite effect. Right, people are going to vote against the establishment. If I was working for Kamala Harris or one of these more establishment track candidates, I'd be saying, "Can you refrain from endorsing me, please?" Do not endorse me yet. In fact, maybe you could put out like a critical tweet about how I'm being too cavalier about Wall Street. Exactly. I mean, that's the smart move. Exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. At this point, yeah, that's a great point. At this point, all the super delegates are performative. I mean, they're really. It's just. It's it's signaling. It's nothing. It's meaningless. But but. That's the politics. All right, appreciate the call. All right, thank you, guys. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you 
by making videos.